Two bees. <laughs> this is Lord Bob Hickman. I am the Baron of Ravensworth and the High Priest of the Order of the Purple Cord. And I welcome you to today's video. A lot of you in the Purple Cord have been writing and saying, Psychic Bob, are you going to do more Purple Cord videos? And of course we are. And so here we are today. And I promised all of you we were going to talk about a mystical subject. The mystery of the Ankh. And I tell you, it's a wonderful day to do that. It's Sunday. I tell you, I've been meditating and out walking today and being in the spirit. I even got on my Wiccan robes, got on my purple cord, and I'm wearing my magical Ankh. Because we're going to talk about the Ankh today. But before we get in that, give me just a moment. You know, I want to just say, first of all, thank you also to all of you who came out to yesterday's video. If you didn't see that, that's the video right before this. It was our Saturday night seance. We had a wonderful time. And I have to tell you, when I was reviewing the video and I saw that Alfred had channeled through, he was the lost soul from a few weeks ago, it did my heart good. And I want to say thank you to all of you who sent prayers and energy to Alfred and also to me to be able to channel and to be part of all of this. So thank you for your wonderful support. If you haven't seen that video, it's right before this one. Check it out, okay? Well, Purple Cord members, here we are. And for those of you who are new here to my channel, because I've had a lot of new subscribers, I want to say thank you to all of you this week. Forgive me, I, <clears throat> my voice a little dry. I've been talking all day. I had a lot of private readings this week. For those of you who new, I am a full-time professional psychic medium. And when I'm not running the order of the Purple Cord, I do readings and uh, I write books and travel about. So I have a crazy busy life, but I love every minute of it. And for those of you who are new here, as I was saying, I had an order, a spiritual order, along with Lady Angela McAllister, and it is called the Order of the Purple Cord. It is a Wiccan order. Um, you don't have to be a fully initiated Wiccan to join. Uh, we just invite people to come learn about Wicca. We do teach from a Wiccan perspective. Uh, we ask that you make a purple cord for yourself, like this one I wove out of yarn, and you wear it as a sign of our order. Um, anyways, if you want to learn about the cord, I want to send you over to my website. By the way, I have a new website. Check it out, www.robert-shickman.com. Check it out. Anyways, I know I've got a lot of million things time to cover today. But I, I did want to tell you guys, um, you know, for those of you in the Purple Corps, we are going to be doing uh, very soon a meeting. We're working on coordinating a live conference call so that we can all meet up on the phone and have maybe even a phone ritual. So I'll let you know about that very soon. Um, anyways, we're talking today about the mystical Ankh. And that's what I'm wearing. In fact, let me take it off and show you here. This is the Ankh. I, I absolutely love the Ankh. It's an ancient mystical symbol. It comes out of Egypt and it looks like a cross. And in fact, the Coptic Christians have adopted it as their cross symbol. So you'll still see this even worn by Christians, but really the Ankh is an ancient pagan symbol. It comes out of Egypt. And the Ankh is fascinating because it has uh, a number of meanings. Um, the, the, the initial and kind of predominant meaning of the Ankh is it just simply means life. And in ancient Egypt, it was believed to have magical powers to be curative, to heal people, and to restore life. And many of the gods, in fact, let me show you here. This is my goddess Isis. And if you notice in her hand down here at the bottom, she's holding an Ankh very similar to mine. Now the Ankh can take a lot of different shapes here. In fact, let me show you some of my other ones. So we've got this one that I've been wearing lately. Well, let me put this up here for you to see. All right, so we've got a number of different Ankhs and we've got a sterling silver one here. We've got another one silver. This one's made of pewter. But you'll notice they're all they're all similar. They look similar to a cross and they have this loop at the top. And what the, the symbol of the Ankh means 
is it has a few different meanings. One is, I said, it means life. And it was believed by the ancient Egyptians to have magic, curative, and life-giving powers. Um, many people say that the top part represents the feminine element. Uh, it's like the womb of the universe that life comes forth from. The bottom element represents the male principle. And we have male and female united. And this, the crossbar represents the polarity of both forces. So from the union of male and female creates a release of power that generates life. So that's certainly one meaning of it. Some people have said that the Ankh is actually like a person with their arms outstretched watching the rising sun and that the loop is like the halo around the head. So it's like the luminescence of the sun god radiates through the aura. Either way, I think it's all very powerful. I love the Ankh. In fact, when I first started out in the craft, I wore an Ankh uh, because at the time it was difficult to get pentacle pendants. And you know, it's interesting. I, I'd love to hear from any of you who've been in the craft uh, since the early days, because back in the 19, I'd say the 50s through the 70s, there was not a big open Wiccan community like we have today. And you couldn't just go buy pentacle pendants. But what you could buy, particularly from the 60s forward, was the Ankh. The Ankh became very famous in the hippie circles. And so many Wiccans wore the Ankh as a, a magical symbol. And so today you'll find, <clears throat> excuse me, even many Wiccans who are still wearing the Ankh. And I love the Ankh. That was probably actually the first Wiccan jewelry I owned was an Ankh. So there you go. And many years later, I'm still wearing the Ankh. Now, what's fascinating is that, you know, the... Um, the Ankh can take, as I said, many forms, like this one, for example, has hieroglyphics on it, and so does this one. Uh, sometimes in the Ankh, up in the, the top, they'll have the scarab, which is a solar symbol. Uh, sometimes they'll have the Eye of Horus, which can be a solar or lunar symbol. Sometimes in the bottom bar, you'll see Isis standing with a staff. Uh, this one has just hieroglyphics, but I've seen all various forms of the Ankh. Uh, and it's absolutely, to me, absolutely fascinating. So, you know, what's interesting is I was reading here, let me find the book. This is an interesting book that you might want to show. It's a classic book from the 70s, Helping Yourself with White Witchcraft. It's by Al G. Manning. And Al talks in here about the power of the Ankh. And um, this is from the chapter, How to Use Amulets, Talismans, and Charms for Protection. And I'm gonna just read this section to you from that chapter. The Ankh and how it protects you. The Ankh or Cruxansata, by the way, Cruxansata is Latin, it means looped cross, has been a symbol of life and protection since before the dawn of recorded history. In the ancient occult traditions, the Ankh was brought to Egypt's inner temples from Atlantis. Now, isn't that interesting? Because remember yesterday or earlier in the week, I was talking about the Carrion aliens and the connection between Atlantis and Egypt. Here's another reference to that connection. <clears throat> in the ancient occult traditions, the Ankh was brought to Egypt's inner temples from Atlantis. But we are most interested in its usefulness for you today. Worn on a ring or on a chain around the neck, the Ankh is a powerful talisman for warding off evil and defending you against the negative suggestions and spells of others. Silver is the best material for the protective use, but the Ankh is available today in a great multiplicity of sizes and materials, including silver, gold, wood, bronze, copper, and even lead. I wouldn't recommend a lead Ankh. This is an old book. Uh, but they do have pewter today, which is lead-free pewter. So that's, a, that's another option. <clears throat> Taking your astrological medals into account, you would still make your final selection of an Ankh by passing your hand over several and picking the one which responds to you with the greatest energy flow. 
And it goes on and gives a consecration ritual, which we'll do here in a minute. But you see, what he's talking about is, you know, as I said, the various metals are wonderful. And this is really what you can do when you go to the store and you're looking at an ankh or you're online. You just pass your hand over the pictures of the ankhs. Get a sense. See which one talks to you. You know, if you don't have an ankh or you're looking to buy an ankh, you know, I might suggest to you rarewickaspells.com. Um, I'm buying an Ankh there. In fact, I've got one in my shopping cart now. <laughs> and after I finish this video, I'm going to get it. Lady Angela has some beautiful ones in silver and pewter. She's got some bronze ones there, all types. But um, I love Ankhs. I collect them, so I'm going to get another. But I would encourage you, if you want to get a nice Ankh, Go to rarewickaspells.com. You can just type in Ankh in the search bar uh, or look under the Egyptian section, but you'll find them. They're wonderful. But this book talks about, you know, as you pass your hand over it, your receptive hand, which for me is the right hand, your receptive hand is the hand you don't use predominantly. Like I'm a left-handed person, so left hand is my projective. That's my sin power. But when I want to sense power, I use my right hand. So for me, I'd pass my right hand over these, and I would say, wow, which one's calling to me? And like today, this one was really just calling to me. So I put it on my chain, and I've been wearing it. And, you know, if you want to consecrate your Ankh, you don't have to make it big and complex. It can literally be this simple. And in fact, let me show you this. Uh, this is the consecration ritual in this book. Helping Yourself with White Witchcraft by Al Manning. And it says basically, pass your hand over your Ankh or hold it. So for example, right now I'm going to hold the Ankh in my hand. And it says here, you do the following chant. Ankh of power, sign of life, protect me evermore from strife. Bound me by word and light, keep me safe both day and night a strong protector unto me, as my will, so mote it be. And see, that's all it takes. Focus on that, send healing energy, protective energy, visualize light infusing your Ankh as you chant. You now got a powerful symbol. You see, the Ankh actually on its own is powerful just without the consecration. It really is because it's it's got ancient power, but if you, you know, put more power into it, you rev it up and it makes it doubly powerful and excellent. So I'm going to encourage you guys, consider doing, getting an Ankh. Please try the ones at Rare Wick of Spells. I love them. I'm shopping there. Um, and, you know, explore the Ankh. You know, it's interesting. I love to wear pentacles also. You know, I'm crazy about the pentacles. I got them here behind me. Um, but what's interesting is the Ankh, predates the pentacle. According to what I've researched, the, the pentacle is about 2,500 years old, and the Ankh is over 5,000 years old, so it's it's even older. So witches who draw are drawn to the Ankh, uh, probably some past life stuff there. You know, I know that I had a past life in Egypt, at least one of them. Uh, actually, I was Ethiopian, and then I went to Egypt in that life. That's a whole nother story. But I remember from that life that I actually wore an Ankh in that life. I had a very clear vision. I was doing a regression. So the Ankh has always spoken to me, even before I was Wiccan. And once I did my past life regressions, and I realized that I do have a connection to the Ankh, now it all makes sense to me. It makes total sense. Why? Since a kid, even as a kid, I loved the Ankh before I was into Wicca. So now I know, and it's still a treasured symbol for me. In fact, I'm thinking about buying a giant Ankh to put on my wall, to have a wall Ankh. Wouldn't that be fun? So we'll have more on that. But anyways, guys, listen, just want to bring that to you. Tell me in the box below, do you wear an Ankh? Have you ever heard of the Ankh? What's been your experience with the Ankh? Do you think you might want to try wearing an Ankh? Let's have a conversation. Share your thoughts below. Anyways, remember to like this, favorite, share it with your friends. Let's get the word out about Spirit Channel. I hope you'll subscribe. And also, if you would like to join our order, the Wiccan Order of the Order of the Purple Cord, 
contact me at my website below, I'll put a link below, or also go over to Lady Angela at her YouTube channel, which is Rare Wicca Spells. Connect with her there. Also go to her rare website, which is rarewickaspells.com. Either way, you can connect with her. Get into the Order of the Purple Cord. At my website, uh, I think, I have to check, I think you can print out your certificate there. I just changed it, so I can't remember if I've got that up. But either way, if you can't get your certificate, reach out to Lady Angela or to me. We'll get it. We'll get you in the order. Uh, it's free to join. No dues, never free for life. You can come or go as you please. The only requirement we ask is that you honor the Wiccan read, meaning, and you harm none. Do as you will. We don't practice black magic. Curses are harm to anybody. And we also ask members to make their own purple cord uh, to wear with their ritual clothes or wear in daily life. And I hope you'll keep uh, keep up with us here. We're going to have more purple cord videos this upcoming week, so keep it here. Uh, but in the meantime, hope you'll like this favorite, share with your friends, be part of Spirit Channel. Go over and subscribe to Lady Angela, also Rare Wicca Spells, her channel. And, uh, you know, let me know what you think. Blessings to all of you. Thanks for being here. We'll see you back here on Monday.